Hello friends, welcome back and this is Farah Sheikh from F Sheikh Excel Master. I hope you guys are doing great and I'm doing wonderful over here. And today we are going to talk about how to handle date and time in Excel. This is the most common question being asked to me that for us, how do we handle the date and time when it comes in Excel? How it interacts with system? How does it know that this is a specific date or time? We are also going to talk about the regional settings and uh, how do we enter the date and time in Excel and also we are going to see some shortcuts how we enter the date and time. We are going to see some calculations which will be very handy when you are doing your employees time record calculations and we are going to talk about the rule the 2029. Well we have a lot of things to cover up today and this will be real exciting. So let us quickly start. So I'm going to make sure that I give you most out of this video. Well, the first most important thing which we are going to talk about is the regional settings. What are regional settings? Those are nothing but when you go and type settings in your system and you will go and time and language. And these are your basically regional settings, the format. Most of the system, they have US standards, which is MMDDYYY which is over here and you can change the settings accordingly over here and these settings are basically locale based on your region that's why it is called as a regional setting well I have a friend in Australia they have a regional setting starting with 16 11 2018 which means it start with a date month and then the year and here we have the month date and the year so when we go back to our excel file and we will select this cell which is having our date and time and we will select the small icon over here or we can just simply right click format cells or there is another option by control one which opens the cell formatting now under the cell formatting when we will go to date and time you must have seen an asterisk over here now many of us have not read this and initially even I have not read this but this is nothing but it says over here that this is a standard regional setting of your system so maybe your system has a different regional settings similarly it is in the time case as well so these are the standard system regional settings which is represented by an asterisk great the next part what we are going to talk is that how this date and time is been handled in Excel. Well, basically any system, when it stores the date and time, it stores into a number. The number before the decimal, which is 43420, represents date and after the decimal represents time. So now let us add another data. Let us assume that we have a date 15 September and 1998 and 1500 hours so that's wonderful now we are very much clear the value of a date in excel is before the decimal and after the decimal the value is the time so we are going to do some entry over here do you know my friends that the starting what is the starting serial number of a date of course it's one yes the one is the starting serial number for date and which represents 1st of January 1900 so when we will enter the value 1 it represents 1st of January 1900 so that's how the date is working out so let us put the value 2 and it reads as 2nd of January 1900 so these are the sequence number the date is getting generated and if we put a negative value the Excel will not able to read it so if you put minus one and as you can see it is giving a hash value which represents that excel is unable to identify that date so that's how the date works in excel so let us assume that we are putting a date of 11th november 2018 11-11-2018 now i need to get the value of this one so basically it's nothing I will go select this value I will go to general I'll select general 
and this number represents the value of this date. Similar way, it works on the time as well. So let us put the time value. Now, we don't know the time value. It will be quite difficult in decimals, but we can easily get it in Excel. That's quite simple. So let us assume that it's 700 hours. So that's the value of 7 o'clock a.m. That's basically that's the value of 7 a.m. So 7 p.m. So that's how we have the date and time value in Excel. So every date and every time has its value. So if it is 12 hours, the value will be 0.5, correct? And if it is 24 hours, the value will be 1. That's absolutely right. Now I'm going to show it to you how are the ways to enter the date and time in Excel. Okay, so we're entering a date 20th October 2018. So I can just simply write 10-20 and when I will hit enter, boom, Excel is smart enough to understand that this value is a date. Now you must have observed that when I enter, I put a dash. Now let us do the same thing by entering a slash. So 10 slash 20, Excel knows that it's a date. So there's no problem if you put dash or a slash. Now if I would like to enter like uh, 1st of January uh, 2018, okay, it will know that it's a date. Then again, if it is 1st of January dash 18, again, it knows that it's 2018. And again, like if I would entering dash Jan 18, again, it knows that it's a date. So one space January 2018, Again, it knows that it's a date and simply one dash one enter again it knows that it's a date so the most important thing is your regional setting and then you handle dates accordingly so we would like to see the values of these dates you can see the value of the dates over here wonderful that's the value of the date isn't it cool enough my friends it's very easy and it's very simple so let us jump on the time now if i would like to enter 7 a.m okay i can just simply put a so excel knows that it's the morning 7 a.m now if you're not comfortable with a 2400 hours timing then i have a trick for you seven zero zero space and p it notes that it's a pm value so now let us assume that we have this value okay we'll take this value plus this value okay and we say excel the format timing go to format and date and time okay so we have a nice formatting over here wonderful that's 1st of January 2018, 7 p.m. We would just like to extract the date. So there's a simple formula which is int, which means integer. Boom. And we just got the value of the date. So in case if you get a 12 a.m., there's nothing to worry. It is the value is 00. zero so it has no impact on the timing section when you're doing the calculations. You can simply set the formatting to a short date so if you just like to extract the time now so the total value minus integer value will give you the time value the time will go general and we are going to say time so that's 7 p.m wow that's wonderful so now you know how to extract uh, a, a joint date and time you know how to split the date separately and a time separately and even you know now how to join two separate date and time so now we are going to move forward and we are going to go over here and I've just made simple calculations and we are going to look how it works. Okay, so this is basically the difference, the start date and the end date. So I would like to have a difference. Okay, there is a formula called days, okay, which is called days. Okay, so basically this formula will ask me for the end date, comma, 
and the start date enter it gives me the value difference there is nothing wrong doing it end date minus the start date it will still give me a difference of 30 days okay I prefer to use the formula because I know when I'm doing some date calculation it helps me to understand okay yes there is a place where I'm doing a date calculation but there is no harm or it is nothing wrong that if you minus the end date minus with the start date so let us look here so here I need to enter a days like uh, I have a visa and I need to check the validity of my visa so now you can see it is just showing me as 1st of September because anything minus by zero will give me a value as zero or null will give me the same date so i'm going to add another 30 days which is going to give me first of october wonderful and 90 days will give me 30th of november we'll push it back to 30 days so that's the end date of my visa now if you would like to do the calculation in the before 30 days or after the 30 days you're just going to select your start date minus 30 okay that's easy that's how you do it you got the value 2nd of august and if you have, would like to have it after 30 days so the start date plus 30 so that's how it works so this is a very simple calculation with the date i would like to show you one more thing like when i'm copying this data and if i paste it in this cell and paste it as a value you got a number so now you know this number is nothing but a date this happens when you are extracting a lot of your data from your ERP system and when you open your Excel file and you find this is a number whereas in your ERP it's a date so nothing to worry just simply select this column or that date and just press ctrl shift 3 so that will convert it into a date or you can just select your custom formatting which you like it and there are many formattings which I'm going to talk about now shortly and we have it over here date and time you can select the top formatting accordingly as per your convenience so I would like to have this one wonderful the long date we have checked the dates we have seen that when we paste the date how it works when we do the addition how it works and we have seen the time how to enter the time and the various method to enter the time okay now there was a rule which i was talking about so the rule 2029 20, okay that's the rule over here okay so this is applicable when we are entering the two digit dates so what does it say is that excel determine the century by using the cutoff year 2029 which which means like so let us enter the date 9-1-29 boom so excel knows that it's the year 2029 so now we are going to enter the date 9-1-9-1-30 it will take it as 1930 because that's a cutoff year of that century so if you would like to enter something like 2030 nothing to worry you just enter 9-1-2030 put a dash over here enter and excel will treat this as the date and drag it down and see the numbers you know it has automatically taken the number of 2030 year so this rule will definitely get changed as the year passes on so currently it has been set to 2029 so this is applicable only when you are entering two digit dates means you are just entering the last two digits of the year so just be careful if you are entering something more than 29 then it will take it into 1930 for that last year century it will not take it into this century okay and whatever you are entering before 2029 it will take it in this century which is 2000 uh, i thought it's very important to highlight this because uh, we hardly have now 20 years and a lot of people are doing planning and they come to a date called 1930 i got this question from some of my friends where they're doing some analysis and suddenly they see 
a value 1930. Oh, well, then I just studied and I found that there is a rule in system and it has a cutoff year. So whatever you will enter after 29 will be considered into the previous century and whatever you will be entering it before 29, it will be considered in this century. So it's very much clear now and we will be heading forward now. So we are going to jump to our time calculation. This is a very important concept. So don't miss it, my friends. And this will be very helpful when you are doing a lot of calculations with your employee cal time calculations. It is very helpful and especially when you have uh, bulk retention calculations, even it plays a 